All right, so this is gonna be the most boring day in the life of a software engineer video that you've ever watched. Now, there are a lot of a uh, day in the life of a software engineer videos. Some of them do a pretty good justice of kind of going through what a typical day looks like, but a lot of them are filled with fluff, you know, like eating food, hanging out with coworkers, and working from Guam remotely. And honestly, uh, I'm guilty of it too. One of my first videos that ever gained traction was a day in the life of a software engineer video that literally had nothing to do with really the day-to-day -day life of coding. I think a lot of day in the life videos are over glamorized and overproduced because let's be real, coding is just a nine to five desk job and it's not very thrilling. So anyways, in this video, I'm gonna take you through a typical work day of a software developer, and hopefully by the end of it, you have a good idea of what we actually do. But before we dive into that, first I gotta give a big thank you to Udemy, who is the sponsor of today's video. Now, if you're interested in learning how to code, I think Udemy is a great place to start. When I first started programming, I took a couple of Udemy courses that really built the foundation of my programming career. A couple of courses that I continually recommend are the Complete 2022 Web Development Bootcamp by Angela Yu and React the Complete Guide by Maximilian Schwartzmuller, a course that I've dived into recently. I don't think courses in general are the end-all be-all to becoming good at programming, but a good course can be a terrific first step, and Udemy has a ton of great courses. I'll put these two courses plus a couple more that I recommend down in the description. All right, so let's go ahead and begin with the start of the day. Now, as a human, you'll have to wake up, you'll have to get ready for work, but with uh, the new work from home culture that's overtaken software development, typically that looks like waking up at 8.55 and then logging into your first meeting at 9 o'clock. One thing that really surprised me about my first software job is how much People don't really care if you're not in at nine o'clock sharp. So for me, software was my first introduction to the corporate world. Before that, I worked, you know, a string of uh, service jobs. And if you walked in a minute late, you would be penalized. I remember the first time I was running late to my first uh, software job, I was super stressed out and I thought I was gonna get in a lot of trouble. But I walked in like five minutes late and nobody really cared. I kind of quickly realized that most people don't really care unless you have a micromanager. People don't really care if you don't get in right at nine o'clock sharp. Unless you have some type of meeting or obligation right at nine, you could come in at 9.30, you could come in at 10 o'clock, or you could even come in early at seven o'clock with the expectation that you're working your full eight hours. So if you get in at seven, you work till three. If you get in at 10, you work till six. As long as you're not missing any obligations, it really isn't that big of a deal. Software engineering has a lot of flexibility when it comes to your schedule. A lot of working from home, I pretty much exclusively work from home. And I have a lot of coworkers that kind of travel the United States and the world and stay in new Airbnbs every month. Basically, as long as you get your work done, uh, respond to all your emails, respond to all your messages from your coworkers, communicate to your schedule and attend all the meetings that you're supposed to, nobody really cares uh, when you get your work done. Now, obviously I can't say this is how it is for every organization. You may be required to go into the office, but this is typically the standard, at least, uh, you know, as of filming this video, uh, that a lot of companies follow. My company follows it, and I know a lot of other people in the industry that have a similar schedule. Okay, so let's go ahead and talk about the first thing you're gonna do when you start your day at your programming job. You'll probably look through your emails, review some code, write some code of your own. It's really gonna be different for everyone, but typically one of the first things that most software developers do is attend a daily stand-up meeting, which is what the name implies. It's a daily meeting. The stand-up portion comes from the idea that if you stand up while you have this meeting, people won't wanna stand for very long and the meetings will be short. That's because these meetings are intended to be short and the purpose of them is to kind of bring up issues, plan for the day or the next couple days, and then unblock others from getting their job done. Now the daily stand-up meeting is part of a much larger group of meetings, otherwise called ceremonies, that come from this thing called the agile methodology, which is what most organizations kind of claim to follow for their way of developing software. I've talked about Agile a few times on this channel, so I won't dive too deep into it. You can go check out my videos on that if you're interested. But to give you a high level overview, these Agile meetings usually consist of a daily standup and multiple recurring meetings for the purposes of planning, 
refining work items and then reflecting on the work that has been done. So as a software developer, you can kind of expect a lot of meetings throughout your day. Okay, so after your daily stand-up meeting, let's go ahead and talk about the bulk of what you'll be doing as a software developer. Now this may come off as a big shocker to you guys, but uh, the majority of your day won't be spent eating food or hanging out with your super cool coworkers. But matter of fact, you'll be coding. Insane, right? Like I said, I think this is why a lot of day in the life videos try to be so entertaining because it's honestly pretty boring. Unless you're writing code, which even writing code can be boring sometimes. Sometimes it can be exciting, but a lot of times pretty boring. Okay, so to really understand the bulk of your day or what you'll be doing, you'll have to understand the coding life cycle. So to understand the coding life cycle, you first have to understand what a typical dev team looks like. Now this varies from project to project, company to company, but typically it looks something like this. There are the more business facing roles, uh, the product owner and the business analysts who are essentially the bridge between the business slash customer and then the dev team. These are basically the people that come up with feature requirements and kind of tell you uh, what you need to code. If you're on a front end project, you may have a UI designer that creates the user interface or mockups of the software you'll be building. And then once features are planned from the previous meeting structure that I mentioned, and then the designs are made, that's where you, the programmer, comes in. And this is where you'll spend the rest of your day developing cool new core awesome features. Just kidding, matter of fact, most of your day will be spent fixing bugs, maintaining existing features, or working through tech debt, which is just old or poorly written code that needs to be updated or removed. Anyways, after you write some code, whether that be by creating a new feature, fixing a bug, or updating an existing feature, your code will have to be reviewed by other programmers on your team. You'll make what is known as a pull request with something like GitHub. Other programmers on your team will review it, and then your code will be absolutely shred to pieces by a more senior developer on your team making you feel like a total fraud. Also, you will have to review code from other developers. Now, code review is definitely a skill that takes a lot of time to get good at. Anyways, after code is approved by your dev team, it then needs to be tested and verified. This can be done at a high level with testing practices such as unit testing, which is essentially code written by you or your team that tests the code and verifies the new code that you write. But typically more granular testing is done by other people on your team known as QA or quality assurance. These people will run through the software, the new features that you wrote to verify that one, it's not breaking anything and two, it's doing what it's intended to do. Now, if they find any bugs or issues, which they always do, they'll send the code back to you. We then have to start the dev process all over again of writing the code fix for whatever bug they found, uh, making a pull request, getting it reviewed by your team, and then having QA validate that code again. Now, once all the features for a given time frame are developed, usually this is every two weeks, these new features will be demoed to stakeholders like people in the business or the product owner or business analyst themselves. It will then be packaged up in a new release version, shipped out to the consumer, and then the process starts all over again. And that is the 100 foot overview of a typical software development life cycle and what you'll be doing day to day as a software developer in between all of your meetings that probably could have been an email. Anyways, I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, make sure to like, comment, and subscribe. And I'll see you on the next one. Peace.